Hello everyone, this is Jotto, and welcome to the Mana Grind Tournament Recap. Featuring the top decks, featuring the top cards, and the state of the meta game for this week's tournament. Now, the weekly show is up now. Twitch ate it. Um, yeah, it took me three days to upload it. I'm sorry <laughs> for anyone who was expecting it on Sunday or Monday. I did try and get it up, but I couldn't. Twitch, like, chewed on it. So, it is up now, and I apologize for it. It's um, on budget cards and decks for new players, like 800 dust budget. And, and yeah. So, for this, this weekend, I'm either going to do a... Uh, King of the Hill thing, possibly for my Hearth U, or a couple of matches streamed by a tournament player, hunt around, things like that. It, I'm, I'm going to try and do an actual set of matches this week, and then continue with uh, something deck orientated the next week. So anyway, as with always, if you have uh, suggestions about that, put it in the comment section below, I'll take it into account. So without further ado, let's get started, shall we? Top four from NA. We had Polish King, Zed Rusher, or Z Rusher, Booya, best name ever, and Jozar. Now, going into Mr. Polish King, he was playing Rogue Cantrip. This is a deck that sort of dropped off the face of the earth last week. It didn't make a top four appearance for the first time in a long time. But now it's coming back in strength, winning a tournament, and it had a few odd things. I must admit, it was playing a couple of odd decks that I'm not used to when looking at these decks. So anyway, Rogue Cantrip, as I'm sure most of you know, is a tempo aggro deck that is based a lot around keeping your hand full with cantrip minions like Loot Hoarder and Novice Engineer and Azure Drake and sometimes Gnomish Inventor and things like that. But this variation, one was playing one Azure Drake, whereas a lot do play Gnomish Inventor. Azure Drake has been popping up a bit more in these lists recently. Black Knight is coming up a bit more in these rogue cantrip decks now as they see it as a way of tempoing out a Druid Ramp deck from their Ancient of War, for example. Leroy Jenkins and Edwin Van Cleef showed up. This is not something that's normal. Edwin Van Cleef was in the first rendition of Rogue Cantrip months ago, and it was quite powerful, but it just wasn't that good compared to some of the other three drops you could play. But this deck makes it work. It has just enough card draw to make the Edwin Van Cleef work, and just enough cheap cards. Leroy Jenkins is the Pyroblast of the deck. It's the Pyroblast of the deck along with Eviscerate, gives it some reach against other cantrip decks and against ramp, lets them punch through healing, sometimes even killing a healing deck before they realize they're in danger so they don't heal. Happens more often than you'd think. Um, so other things, Blade Flurry is something which comes up every so often. We have a Spiteful Smith, big five drop difficult to deal with, we have a Knife Juggler, which can deal with some of the small stuff. Just a lot of very interesting texts. Even Double Defy's Ringleader and an Earthen Ring Farseer. Some texts which we don't normally see. Defy's Ringleader triggers off Knife Juggler, gives him some early board presence. Earthen Ring Farseer helps against these Mage decks and Druid decks with the Burn and Aggro decks in general. Very interesting deck. Very interesting variation on the Rogue. On to Z Rusher's mid to late Paladin. This is a very odd Paladin deck. It's sort of minion-based control. I've used the phrase before, but it is. Its control aspect is the Avenging Wrath, Equality, Consecration, Hammer of Wrath, Truce Over. That's a lot of board wipe, by the way. Three spells with a lot of board wipe and a Wild Pyromancer. It's a lot of control for a few amount of spells. But the minions is where it really comes into its own. A Cairn Bloodhoof making a final. Karen has always been seen as incredibly slow, but no one is playing Silence at the moment. There is very few Silences around, so it is almost always a 2 or 3 for 1. For 6 mana, it's slow, 
but in these grindy games especially when you can follow it up with a guardian of kings for example to heal up some of the swing back from the aggro deck it really does slow the game down and lets you position your bigger threats things like ragnaros and Tyrion are amazing win conditions and Cairn and Guardian of Kings and Sylvanas and the Black Knight even Tinkmaster really help slow the game down for these things. Speaking of Sylvanas shows up in this deck as in all decks I'm not gonna stay on it for too long but it really does come into its own in this kind of deck because Sylvanas slows down the game and gives your opponent something to deal with which these late game decks can often abuse. Azure Drake showing up as a one-off with spell power, Harvest Golem and Wild Pyromancer coming down early to deal with some of the threats, Novice Engineer and Loot Hoarder providing card draw and just digging further into your deck. Very interesting Paladin deck. Paladins have been coming back a bit recently. Now, on to a more controllish Paladin late game deck from Booyah. Now, this one was playing more late game. In terms of a Yazera, a Big Game Hunter, Faceless Manipulator, Double Wild Pyromancer, Double Earthen Ring Farseer, Double Guardian of Kings. These are a lot of late game cards and a lot of healing and defense. And with the spells, it had a Lay on Hands, all the removal, two Holy Lights. There's so much healing in this deck. We have two Holy Lights, Lay on Hands, two Earthen Ring Farseers, two Guardian of Kings. There's a huge amount of healing, and the three win conditions in Ragnaros, Tyrion, Ysera. This is an incredibly late game focused deck, and it's something which a lot of people have issues with, especially Druids. Weirdly enough, Druid Ramp has issues against control decks. You wouldn't think so because it prides on its late game, but if you think about it, Druid Ramp has precisely one way of dealing with big creatures, which is big creatures, and that's it. If your stuff is equal size to theirs and you have the ability to get rid of their stuff that they innervate out, they just crumble and you just sustain through all the damage they can do and you just beat them down with card advantage and that's what this Paladin deck is capable of. Again, Paladins have been coming back with these more late game decks, we saw them in aggro, now we're seeing their controlling side, it's something we saw ages ago from Rhea and it sort of went past, no one really paid attention to it. But it's very interesting to see it come back now. Definitely a top tier deck. Speaking of decks coming back, there's been a bit of a a common theme this uh, this episode. We had a rogue, paladin, and now for the mage. Mages showed up for the first time in ages last week. We saw a mage control deck, blew everyone's mind that it still worked. Still playing some of the freezes, it was amazing that it still managed to work, even after being heavily, heavily nerfed. And this is playing a few more minions, keep the pressure on early. We have things like Lepronome, Sylvanas, Leroy, Sorcerer's Apprentice, Mana Worm. These are really, really, really potent early drops that help slow down the game, help deal with some of the aggro while you get your late game on with things like Ice Blocks and Pyroblasts and Flame Strikes. Some of the spells that we don't see a lot of are double RK missiles in control decks. It's very sort of slim in terms of how much it comes up, but with Mana Worm, double mirror image, double arcane missiles, double arcane intellect, getting that three mana draw too. It's a bit of a tempo loss, but in this kind of deck when you can just freeze and then draw off, it just gets you some card advantage and gives you some more options. Two of polymorph helps deal with a lot of the big decks and you have just enough burn to punch through with your Leroy and Ragnaros along with your double pyroblast and double fireball. Interesting to see mage control come back in various different ways. Now onto the EU, we had three decks this week. We had Kaldi in first place, CK Lekka in second place, and in third place we had Kax. Now, Kaldi was playing three different decks. I decided to pick one. He played three different Druid decks. I would recommend going to check the other two out. Um, I'll put the, uh, the link in the description to the deck list as usual. But the interesting thing about the third deck, which is the one I'm going to talk about, is it's a druid aggro deck. We haven't seen a druid aggro deck in months. It's not common. It really isn't common. Most of these play these big late game decks, and this is an actual druid aggro deck. So, we'll start with some of the spells, actually. Normally I'd start with the minions when it comes to aggro, but what really sets apart this particular deck, besides a couple of legendaries, is the spells. We have Savage Roar functioning as a mini bloodlust. 
We have swipes, claws, innervates, power of the wild, force of nature, getting out big bursting spells with buffs. And then we have a weird one, just healing touch. Healing touch is in here for two reasons. One, to heal up things that get buffed a lot. Same with one of the creatures being Earthen Ring Forest here, but mostly to win out in the aggro mirrors. Because remember, this was a third deck out of three. So he brought this into sideboard effectively against certain decks. And the healing touches help against burn, they help against aggro, combo, and combo decks have issues with aggro decks. So you just bring in the healing touches with your aggro deck and flatten the combo deck. Very interesting addition in the spells at least. We also have in the minions, Arcane Golem, not seen very much. It's four damage for three mana. Late game, the drawback isn't a drawback. We have King Mukla. King Mukla. But if you think about it, if you put down a King Mukla on turn one, you win. If you innervate a Mukla, you win. It's so hard for them to kill that. In fact, they can't really kill it. There are very few combinations that can kill that. And even then, they have to invest two or three or four cards even. It's really the equivalent of playing a slightly bigger mill house when they have no spells. It's just incredible if you get it down early. Very powerful legendary. Even though it has a drawback in the bananas, it's sometimes a tempo loss. They can't do that early on in the game. They actually have to deal with a 5-5. Late game, it drops off a bit in power, but early game, it's incredible. Leroy Jenkins gives some punch, along with Force of Nature, essentially playing three copies. Argent Commander, an arcane golem do similar things giving three copies of that essentially we have keeper of the grove punches through taunts deals with fairy dragons a lot of the small things that hamper aggro a lot like harvest golem we have knife juggler giving a lot of extra damage off each of your minions things like keeper of the grove does three now druid of the claw is just a big minion that can become charged earthen ring first helps you trade a bit better especially with druid of the claw which can lose a bunch of health and still live. Same with King Mukla. You can heal these back up straight to full with three. And Fairy Dragon and Novice Engineer function as card draw and just punch against control decks. Now, the interesting thing is picking Novice Engineer over Loot Hoarder without buffs, or mostly without buffs. And the real reason I see for this is twofold. One is Savage Roar. You want as many Savage Roar targets as possible. And you really don't want to lose out on a Savage Roar target in favor for doing one extra damage to your opponent if they're playing Druid, for example. And the other one is Power of the Wild. It buffs up all of your stuff. And a 2-3 is arguably better than a 3-2, simply because of Savage Roar. So Novice Engineer becomes slightly better if you're running those kinds of cards than loot quarter but it is close and it, it is a bit of a personal preference but i i do like the logic behind playing novice engineer over here anyway the reason i spent a lot of time on that one is because the last two decks i'm going to talk about are both mage control decks now i'm just going to talk about the differences so in this one which was from ck leka we had a lot more minions we had things like double azure drake double water elemental these are slow minions. They just grind your opponent out. They give you spell damage. In the case of Azure Drake and Blood Mage. Very, very grindy cards. And then we had a Nightblade. He took a Nightblade, the most underestimated hive drop in the game, in my opinion, to second place. Which is incredible. Nightblade does a lot of things for you. First of all, it adds a bit of extra burst, which is sometimes all you need as a mage. And second of all, a 4-4 actually trades with a lot of things. It does die to Argent Commander, but if they've already used Argent Commanders, or you're using a late game, or you have a Water Elemental out or something, they can't really go for the Nightblade. It's just three damage to the face, and then it might deal an extra four. As a one-off tech, it's actually very interesting. You can also board it in against control decks because it dodges pretty much everything outside of Flame Strike, which interesting thing about this deck, it is not playing Flame Strike or Blizzard. It's missing out on a lot of this board wipe, depending on a lot of the early minions and some of the freezes and direct damage from Ice Lance and Ice Bolt. This is 
designed to kill as soon as possible while still playing things like Ice Block and Arcane Intellect and some of the slower stuff. This is sort of a weird hybrid between Mage Control, like I had two choices when naming this deck, Mage Control and like a mid-range spell deck. The main reason I picked Control is because it looks like this is a very bursty deck that could technically win on turn 8, but the shell comes from a mage aggro, uh, comes from a mage control deck, and often this deck will win just by grinding his opponent out. Turn 10, 12, 11, like just grinding his opponent out with things like Nightblades, Water Elementals, Pyroblast, putting down your Ice Blocks, getting your combo pieces. Hello, random Skype message. Anyway. Why did I leave Skype on? Whatever, we'll leave Skype alone. Anyway, so it's a very interesting deck. I will admit it's kind of difficult to name as it's sort of a weird control aggro mid-range hybrid of stuff. But it is a very interesting deck. You can see where it came from, what it's designed to do. It's new spin on some of the, uh, the mage control shells and aggro shells. It's just a weird deck that I do expect to see several renditions of. I don't think we'll see this exact deck again, but we'll definitely see some things derived from this.